Well, the whole world saw this stage and this square. There is an independent square in the city of Kyiv, Ukraine. Everybody from all over the world, in every country of the world, people have seen this square filled with people, with millions of people. And this stage here is the stage that represent the freedom of the Ukrainian people and the will of the Ukrainian people to fight for freedom and to fight for democracy, to fight for their rights and to tell the world that no, we are no more going to be slaves any longer and that we are no longer going to allow the old regime, the communist and totalitarianism ideology to rule and captivate us as a nation and as a people. Well, at the, the, but what most people do, do not know is that at the head of this protest we have is the Christian church, is the evangelical church of this country and uh, of this city. Uh, every day from this stage, we before all the millions of people, we had, mil uh, we had prayers going on every day from 8 in the morning to 10, 10 o'clock before the politicians began to speak. Every day, we had the heads of denominations and the head of churches coming together and praying and lifting the country before the Lord, before the politicians could come. Then at the end of every day, before the, the, the whole program ends, the people who were, I mean, the heads of denominations and end of churches will come up here and pray and lift the nation before God. That is why it's a miracle that this orange revolution the way it has been called, and people wearing this orange color all over the country, it has become historical that nothing has happened uh, violent, no violence has taken place, none of these glasses has been broken, none of these houses have been vandalized, it has been peaceful, and the presence of God here has been so awesome to the extent that believers have said they do not always feel that kind of anointing and that kind of presence in the church even when they come. The kind of anointing that was present in all this place with all the people here, they said it is only possible when after a strong presence of praise and worship a message has been presented in the charismatic church. So this place was, it was like heaven was open over this kind of place, over this particular place. People became kind to one another. People became loving to one another like never before. And the thing that has happened is that people, unbelievers who have come in here, they have joined in singing Christian songs and saying, look, we have not been to a protest. We have been, it is like we have been to a revival service. So that is what God is doing in the Ukraine. The nation is coming alive. And the most important thing is, this is unbelievable, like the Russian people cannot ever gather together for two hours without drinking vodka and alcohol and beer. But these people were gathering here for two weeks and they will not drink anything. And they will not you know, fight and they will not uh, ridicule one another. They will not misuse uh, drugs and things like that. It is a total miracle. The, vi the presence of God has come to this nation. God has come to visit Ukraine. And we are very happy to share that with the rest of the world. For three weeks, the entire world has been watching as events unfold in Ukraine. The Orange Revolution came about due to the numerous falsifications in the second round of the presidential elections. Ukrainians went to their city streets, gathering in massive protests. They accused the officials of violating election campaign laws and demanded that the government resign and also nullify the results of the Central Election Committee. People are fed up with crime. That's the limit. If we won't stand up for our rights right now, the nation will fall. That's it. Ukraine will die. I will stay here until we have a president who will guarantee the constitutional rules that we can be free and not slaves. I have brought warm socks, mittens, and coats. We are taking it all to the headquarters so people can get warm. I brought them a warm blanket, and I went to the store, and I bought a chicken, some water, and bread, and napkins, and I gave it to these guys. It was nice to be able to take a closer look at them. Now I'll visit them every day, as long as they stay here. My partner and I have donated a van full of food and clothes, and tomorrow we'll give more. Everyone who is standing here is ready to stand, even to death, to make the greatest sacrifice. 
but not to give back our freedom, the freedom of the heart and of the soul, freedom for our children and grandchildren. It's not just an issue for today, but for the next years and maybe centuries, we are fighting and standing for this. I won't go back until Yushchenko is the president of Ukraine. The sudden revival of this nation has become obvious to everyone in the world. We are for a fair vote. We are for a fair vote. We are for a fair vote. God has his own plan of how to revive and develop Ukraine. To see it fulfilled, he took a man and put the dream in his mouth. And the work began to move because a man appeared who was able to take responsibility for the revival of the entire country. God of heaven and earth, Lord of all living things, we don't doubt that you have given this country into our hands, and as your anointed apostle, as your sent one, my God, I declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, and as a representative of the Church of the Lamb, we, and I, as the head of this army, are taking full responsibility for the salvation of Ukraine. We are taking responsibility for the redemption of our country. We are taking responsibility for an all-embracing rebirth and reformation. My God, today I believe you as never before. And I can see right now that you will do it. But all that is seen is the result of what is happening in the unseen spiritual world due to prayer. The last 10 years have been especially active ones concerning the prayers of Christians. Many churches have been interceding for their country. Once a month, the believers of the Embassy of God gather for three days of fasting and prayer. Additionally, each night there are special prayer groups interceding for Ukraine. Since 1998, the Embassy of God's annual 10-day summer and winter fasts have united thousands of ministers from Ukraine and around the world. The summer fast of 2004 was dedicated to the presidential election campaign. Thousands of believers were praying for the will of God to happen in their nation and for a spiritual revival in society. From December 6th through 17th, the pastors of the Embassy of God prayed and fasted for the election and the political situation in Ukraine. The church must take its position, and I mean its political position. 
not only the religious as we used to take, but the political and social position. And I think that the most important thing we as the church must do is to declare to this society that we must give back all the honor to God. Everything happening now is the direct answer to our prayers. God is alive. He is, and he answers us and saves the oppressed. God doesn't tolerate iniquity, and he gives strength to the nation that fights against iniquity. This is history. God is opening the heaven over Ukraine. That nation, which was humiliated, will start rising again. Thus says the Lord, Hitherto you were abased, but now, by my sovereignty, will I start lifting you up. I'm telling you now, to every humiliated one, start moving boldly, start moving firmly, start moving bravely, because your God will go in advance of you. God is with us, and nothing can overcome us. God is with us, and nothing can overcome us. For a long time, the church, and I mean all the churches of Ukraine, had been praying for a spiritual revival. As usual, we thought this revival would come through evangelization or some other religious methods. But I believe that this is the real revival of the Ukrainian nation. We have been praying against the mafia, corruption, and crime. We have been praying that all the cancers of society would be cut off. We want Jesus to enter the social realm. We want the economical and political spheres, which have been in the hands of Satan for so long, to become accessible to God. The lack of spiritual unity, which I could see in Ukraine over the last maybe 10 to 14 years, is influencing every aspect of life, and especially politically. I am convinced that if we would have had more spiritual politicians, Many of the things you heard about over the last months, including the idea of separatism, would have been stopped by the faith of those politicians. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing good can happen in Ukraine if a strong Christian movement doesn't come and establish its principles in society. Because without Christian principles, we can't manage to build something good. Today, our church has come out of the underground. For the first time, I took, as the advance guard, the full response.